let's take it a little bit farther back uh, to about 1990, I want to say. Maybe like 89. I can't remember exactly what year this movie um, came out off the top of my head. But Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer is like this sort of... And it's not really an experimental film. It's just this idea that was executed very well for the time frame of like when it comes out. It stars Michael Rooker, who most people probably know from like The Walking Dead and a couple of other like little roles he's kind of picked up on here and there. Uh, but he plays Henry. And essentially what it is, it's this sort of telling of the really eerie ways of a serial killer in the sense of what... Um, Henry as the serial killer does and what Henry does is he picks out particular victims stalks them a little bit and then eventually kind of kills them however for all of the kills that sort of happen in the film and we kind of go into it where he's already a serial killer there's no 30 minute backstory of when he was a kid or any of that I think they there's some dialogue that kind of goes into a little bit of his uh, history uh, in that sense but it's not major essentially what they just kind of throw you right into is he stalks people, you know, most mostly women, you know, he'll, he's, he's killed men as well, but mostly women. And there is no, there's, it's almost an innuendo. It's like a, it's like a, a little, like it leads it to your imagination because you don't actually see the majority of the murders. All you really see is either the dead body or the, the disposal of the dead body in a way, you know, like it kind of opens up on him uh, following this woman back to her house, doesn't do anything yet, but then he shows back up to the neighborhood later on, pretends to be like an exterminator, I think, or like a house inspector, and she lets him in, and then it immediately, you know, the music kind of drops, it gets eerie again, and then it shows another image, you know, slow pan of her kind of dead with an extension cord wrapped around her neck. Then there's the innuendo that she was also raped, but essentially he does, they don't really show that. You sort of just, it's meant to be left to your imagination to envision sort of what happened and what he did. And that's the majority of the kills that happen in this movie. I want to say there's maybe 10 or 11 kills, if I remember correctly, and you only really see three of them. And one of them isn't really a victim per se. So what the storyline is, is that you have Henry, he's this serial killer, he's on the run, he's kind of a, you know, a typical 80s guy, you know, looking for work, he's got a beat up car, he's a little, he comes off a little antisocial, but also like somebody you don't want to mess with, you know, he keeps a really stern scowl, anybody who knows Michael Rooker, you know, that's the kind of, you know, the, the facial expression he has, and it's, it tells the story of how he meets up with a friend that he made when he was in prison at some point, and the, his friend's sister, so he goes and he stays with them. And then there's constantly this sort of, like, weird chemistry between all of them. Whereas the friend is also kind of down on his luck. And then the sister is also kind of down on her luck. So you got these three guys, these three people in this apartment kind of all down on their luck. And then one of them's a serial killer. So eventually, Henry brings his friend into kind of what he does. And is like, hey, you know, I kill people. You know, I, I don't remember how his friend uh, discovers it exactly. But essentially what it leads into is him kind of going out and helping him with a couple of them after a while maybe just kind of like doing it himself and then they get this camcorder that's used very you know again eerily where it shows them kind of being normal because at that point when the camcorder comes in the friend knows but the sister still doesn't she doesn't really f ever find out i don't think that henry is a serial killer but the friend knows and so they're using this uh, camcorder in like you know in their living room where they're kind of having fun and they're dancing and then it, it immediately cuts to them recording themselves kind of murder this couple and it's very you know unsettling especially when it comes to the sort of grittiness of a old uh you know 80s and early 90s film you know that didn't really have the biggest budget in the world i want to say that movie was made on like 50 grand or something um so there's a little bit more of a kind of grittiness to the way it's presented where it shows the filming of the murder that they, that one of the three murders they do show um, of this couple that they murder together. 
And then it just kind of slow pans out, and it slow pans to the two of them sitting in their living room again, and they're watching the film. So the murder has already happened, and they're re-watching what they filmed like it's reminiscing on home, like, uh, of old videos of, like, your kids at a dance recital. And they're just sitting there chilling. They're eating, like, chips and stuff. Like, it's a movie to them. And that's very creepy as well, you know? it's The, the movie does such a good job at setting the tone for this film that really leads to what is probably the best ending this film could have came to. And what that is, is that eventually, you know, there's throughout the film, there's this kind of like sort of sexual tension that the brother has towards his sister, which also kind of adds a creepiness to it. I, I don't know how many times I could say it. this is a very unsettling film, but it is totally worth watching f for just its its con contribution to the to the horror film genre, because it is really a landmark film and it is a, a tremendously well reviewed film as well. So. I'm digressing right now, but uh, he has this sexual tension with his sister, so eventually he kind of catches Henry and the sister, like, making out, and that pisses him off, and then things kind of calm down, Henry leaves, and he comes back, and the brother is raping the sister, and so he beats the crap out of him, and the two of them kill the brother, and that's where she kind of discovers that he has this kind of, uh, like, coldness to murder, because then he murders him, drags him to the bathtub and starts chopping his body up. And then he's like, we have to go and we have to go now. So they leave. And you think it kind of ends on this sort of love note. You know, Henry found love. He's going to now move on with this girl and they're going to travel the road together. But then it cuts to a really unpleasant scene where you just see him driving down the road. And then he stops abruptly gets out of the car, you know, you can see in the car, the car is empty, she's not there, and then he pulls out a bloody suitcase from the trunk and just leaves it on the side of the road. And the end credits kind of lead up, staring at that suitcase, and that's how you basically know that, like, even though Henry, like, liked this girl, like, he can't bring her along with him because he has this urge to kill people. And she can't be around when he's killing people. It's going to, you know, mess with his, his his desires to, you know, hunt and murder and slay and just be a, you know, a, a serial killer. <laughs> so he kills her. But you don't see it on film. You don't see the actual murder. You just see them share a little bit of dialogue. He gets like a twinkle in his eye, you know, a little creepy twinkle. And then the next scene, you, you are pretty much led to believe that she's dead. And there's no question about it. It's not like Inception or Mother, you know, any of these films with crazy endings. You know, it's not Shutter Island. She's dead. She's 100% dead. And the process of how this film takes... Now, granted, I, I kind of got through it in like five minutes trying to explain it, but it's still... <sighs> What is this? I think the film is not even 90 minutes. I think it's like an hour and 20 minutes, which is crazy because most of the DC animated universe films, those are at least 90 minutes. And this film isn't even close to that. And it's able to tell this story across that time frame and be like a highly rated horror film of its genre. I think it's got like 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I've said this before on this channel that not many films get 80s, let alone 90s or close to 100. And Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer has got that. It's got, like, you know, all 7s and 8s across the board. You know, I think Metacritic has it at 80 out of 100. Uh, even, like, a lot of the more bigger critics, they have always praised it. It's been on tons of these, you know, horror movie lists over the years. You know, a big one that came out from Shudder was In Search of Darkness. They talk about Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer in there. And I had watched it years ago when I was younger, uh, and I had discovered it. I want to say it was around the time where, uh, like, Walking Dead kind of put Michael Rooker back on my like radar because I know I had seen him in a bunch. He he does a real he does really good as a villain. You know, he does really good as sort of the the bad guy of a film. Like he's in like Cliffhanger, and I'm pretty sure he's a bad guy in there. He's in Tombstone, but he's not. He doesn't really play a big character. He's sort of just this other cowboy. Um, I think he's in, what else was he in? I think, I think he's in The Bone Collector. He was in, what else was he in? I can't think of many other things off the top of my head, but for the most part, he usually plays an asshole and or the bad guy. Because he does it very, very well. 
And I don't believe Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer was his first film. And if it was, it's kind of that film that, you know, put him on the map. Because he's going to be known for that for, you know, decades to come. That's going to be something that gets recognized for a very long time. Especially when it comes to people who are really big horror enthusiasts who they recommend this kind of film. Now, it has a sequel I don't even think I've ever seen the sequel. I don't know if it's any good. Um, I don't even, I can't even remember. I know, I know he comes back. I know Michael Rooker comes back as Henry, which is a good thing. You know, you want there to be, you know, the guy who plays Henry again. You want it to still kind of follow his story in a way. But I don't remember that film all that well. Uh, I don't know if it's even got anything but Michael Rooker attached to it, as far as I know. I don't even think it's directed by the same person. So who knows if it's the same quality as this is. They probably like saw how massively successful Henry was back then. You know, like it was still successful for that time. It's just it's gotten a lot of lot more recognition now, uh, especially with things like In Search of Darkness shining a light on those 80s and 70s horror film gems that most of this generation doesn't get exposed to. You only get exposed to it if somebody tells you about it, and that's what's out there, and that's why I wanted to kind of also express my sort of, you know, approval of this film as something that you should totally give a chance to if you haven't seen it already. It is very much like a Halloween and a horror movie staple. It's one of those that you gotta watch. 